Washington Institute. Thank you very much for speaking with the Institute for Societal Leadership at the Singapore Management University. Um, I'd like to start our conversation by bringing you back to your early years, your childhood. You came from a relatively well-to-do family, um, but your parents decided to send you to public school, which was very different from what the other wealth wealthy families were doing. Did they explain to you why they decided to send you to public school? Well, many of the ethnic Chinese want to go to Chinese schools mm. or uh, other rich men's schools. My father believed that all of us must get to know the people here. And at that time, our public school system was very good. So we all went to, all five children <coughs> went to public schools. Quite unusual for ethnic Chinese family. Was it hard for you to adapt? It was a very good move from my viewpoint because that way we had adopted to the needs of the country mm -hmm. much better than any other ethnic Chinese families who at that time usually stick to, to each other. Uh, your father appears to have a very great influence in your life. Um, what did you learn from him? Well, he, he was chairman of a bank and uh, that bank was close to OCBC of Singapore, the Lee family, they were good friends. But he was just one of the founders of the bank. He didn't own the bank at all, no, but he was a professional person, having studied law at the University of Michigan. Now, he adopted the principle that none of us children should go into the bank. Because he says, if you do well and I promote you, people would think it's nepotism. If you don't do, that embarrasses me. But if you don't do well, it also embarrasses me. So keep out. Mm. You know? I give you the best education you want. Mm. And uh, from that then point on, you. you're on your own. So and I think it was a good good advice and good uh, so you have used that principle in your life as well now you that's why i didn't go into banking because he was a banker but also for your children you've expressly said that you don't want uh, your children to work for sgv exactly because this uh, at that time the profession when i started as a one man shop the foreign firms were British, American, and you would say they had discrimination by color of your skin because all the private offices were Caucasians. But the domestic firms, by started by Filipinos, they had discrimination in the sense that they were starting a firm to be succeeded by their children who may still be in high school. Mm -hmm. As to whether they are capable or not, no one knows. Mm -hmm. But it's discrimination by blood. Mm -hmm. I was single, so I went to the universities, talked to the graduating classes, and said that what I'm starting is a complete meritocracy. Whoever is best man, we have the chance to become head of the firm. But what if your children, one of your children wanted to be an accountant and wanted to follow in your footsteps? And if they want to, but they're becoming in different kinds of businesses. But I, if they wanted to take up accounting and they were capable, would you s still have said, no, do your own thing? Oh, uh, no. I was say you, you can compete with me, no, but the, none of them, there are many more business opportunities no? so in different parts of the world. So. Mm -hmm. so meritocracy is paramount to you? Yeah. 
I develop institutions also. In the poor families, they wouldn't be able to send people for MBA mm -hmm. programs abroad. So with Harvard Business School, we started Asian Injured Management. Mm -hmm. And at that time, my purpose was to train as many good people as possible. Whether they stay with the firm or not, that's secondary. Okay. Okay. But it's to train leaders for the country. So, uh, let's say at the present time, <coughs> the sector of finance came Cesar from Porcino. our firm. Mm -hmm. Sector of industry came from our firm. He was, uh, was not a partner because he stayed two, three years. The governor of the central bank, who everyone says is a very good governor, started with SUV also, and many, many other leaders. The former prime minister, Mr. Virata, started with SGV. So in terms of training leadership, and you would find many entrepreneurs and the CFOs, chief financial officer of all the big crew groups, almost all of them came from SUV. So what do you train them? How do you train them to become leaders? Well, first of all, work hard. Uh, integrity is key. And uh, always think of what's good for the country. Why is that so important to you? I mean, when you talk about the professional, um, in most people's minds, uh, the definition of a professional is perhaps someone who is effective, or efficient, and good at what he does. But your con concept of a professional also has to do with his contribution to th his country, right? Definitely. Why, why is that Because so if the country goes down, you go down also. <laughs> so you should help the country move up. No? But I look long term. And after I retired from the firm, I felt that the development of leadership, we have done what should be done. Of course, then the key is how to reduce poverty. Mm -hmm. And this is really a job that people in emerging markets should think of. Now, the Philippines now has a population of 100 million. From whatever data I could get, about 3 million are illiterate. Mm -hmm. These are the poorest of the poor. And these are not people that I can access. These are children of fishermen, children of rural farmers. So I wanted to see how can I access them. I mean, I don't know how to go to a fishing village and see who. But then there's a very successful organization here called Cards. Mm -hmm. And that's a microfinance company with over two and a half million customers in microfinance. And with an excellent group of management people. And CARDS has a thousand four hundred, they call units. And the objective of CARDS is to diminish poverty. That's in their charter. Mm -hmm. So I asked them, can you help me start an education fund? I will give you the funds, and, uh, but to implement, you have to be the one. So they were interested because that also, and the net result of it is that last year, we had a 100,000 students going to school that otherwise would be illiterate. 
by the end of this year, it will be 200,000. What we did with cards is to identify these people, encourage them to go to school, and then give them the funds on a loan basis mm -hmm. that their parents would pay back. Okay. And this has been, so far, very successful. Good. Um, and I understand it's not just you providing the funds, but you also, or SGV helps to audit and monitor the progress of this uh, zero uh, dropout yeah. education. In fact, SGV from their foundation mm -hmm. have made minor contributions. But an American friend of mine told me, he says, Wash, I will match your contribution. So, so far, I've put in one million dollars mm -hmm. for cards and for what we call Synergia. Mm -hmm. Now, they have sent six hundred thousand dollars already, and I expect that they will send another, they send one hundred thousand every month or so, that they commit for uh, fulfill their commitment mm -hmm. to me. Okay, you mentioned uh, Synergia as well. And uh, one of the reasons you said you wanted to work with Synergia is because you respected its leadership. What in particular did you respect of their leadership? Well, I met her by chance at the reception. And then she told me that Ford Foundation had left her with a sum of money, that what she does is to improve teaching provided that the leadership of the town wants change. Mm -hmm. In other words, if the mayor does not want change, then you're knocking your head against a wall. You're fighting him. Okay. But the, to give you an example, uh, at her request, Nede Guevara asked me to go with her to Cotabato. Cotabato is Muslim area. Mm -hmm. There are three Muslim mayors and the school, head of the school there, who wanted change because they are finding that out of 10 students that start grade one, only three finish grade six. Mm -hmm. The seven drop out. Now, so three of these schools with the mayors came to Nene Guevara. And we met for two days. They were each in a round table with the school superintendent, teachers, explaining from their viewpoint why the high dropout rates. Well, Nene Guevara, we, as I said, we never give money mm. to them. But she started working with the parents. And the parents may be illiterate. These are in the Muslim area. So if they are illiterate, they don't care if the children are illiterate. Mm. But then it's, you work with them to convince them that you want their children to have a better life than they have. And, and she has a very wonderful way of doing okay. this. Then to improve teaching methods to motivate the students. After two or three years, instead of three out of 10, it became eight out of 10. But that changes the life of the community. So. I mean, you know, when you see the results, uh, one time in Manila, in Makati here, we met with 37 Muslim mayors who were very thankful for what Synergia has done. So there, whatever sh she wants me to do to help out, so. aside from the financial side, mm -hmm. I am at her command. <laughs> so, 
So education is your passion, and particularly elementary education. Well, I would say it comes to education because my objective is to diminish poverty. But to diminish poverty when people cannot read and write is impossible. The first thing is education if you want to reduce poverty. If they don't, <laughs> if they right. don't go to school and mm. cannot read and write, mm. how can they get a job? Um, I'd like to take you back to accounting for a minute. Um, you knew very early on that accounting is what you wanted to do, but why? Why accounting? Well, because I could go into banking. My father was in banking. Right. And at that time, there were just few banks. So it was good for a young person to be competing or trying to compete mm -hmm. with the two major banks at the time. What, was there a particular aspect of accounting that you found interesting? Well, normally figures are I'm not too bad at <laughs> with figures. Okay. And, and I could see that the profession was dominated by uh, Britishers mm -hmm. and at the time. Mm -hmm. no? So the question is how to compete with them. And then I always believe in whatever you do, whether you're in business or what, if you, you win by people, you win by having good people. Ah, okay. no? So in the end, it's in the profession more so because capital is not required. Mm -hmm. It's brains. Mm -hmm. In the case of a business, of course, when the family has put all the money they have into a business, then you have to take into account that it's all right for them to be in the business no? because the money is there. But in a profession, it's a case of getting the best people. How did you attract good people if you were starting out and you know, nobody knew who you were? Well, I had to go to the university to the graduates. I spoke to to the graduating classes. I say it's a small firm. Uh, however, this will be a complete meritocracy. You're good, you go up, you can run the firm. And that attracted the brightest students. Mm -hmm. And I think even up to now, that principle is the one that helps the firm uh, be so far ahead of competition. Okay. I think right now the, the firm, they say they have about 4,500 people that are larger than the next four firms put together. Mm. So when you set up your firm, what was your vision for it? Well, the main thing is that we must contribute to national efforts. Because if the country does not grow and gets into trouble, we'll be in trouble. So the whole thing is, even on self-interest, we must help the country grow. That's something that you instilled in all your associates? Of course. And if you help the country grow by bringing in investors, the firm benefits too, because you may get more mm -hmm. clients that way. You know. So many of the current uh, groups are people that I knew when they were, I knew John Go Kong, Kong Wei. Yeah. Uh, at Ayala. that time he was a young man coming from Cebu mm -hmm. with only his brains mm -hmm. but nothing much more. Uh, but there are many, I knew Henry C. Mm -hmm. the biggest mi business group here now, when he was selling shoes mm -hmm. in uh, Ichage. So you grew SGV geographically as well, with uh, working with overseas partners. Overseas? Yeah, uh, you grew, so you no, have uh, cooperation. After we were successful mm -hmm. here, 
in seeing that the profession is the top firms must be local mm -hmm. firms. Then I first went to Taiwan, because at that time Taiwan was starting to grow and needed assistance. And then we were very successful there. And we found a partner, uh, Tian Sung, who was, again, he went to Harvard, but he had a very small practice. So I found the, that this is an opportunity to also bring international firms into Taiwan, business firms. Huh? And so we were quite successful there. Then we did the same in uh, Thailand, mm -hmm. Indonesia. Thank you very much, sir, for speaking with us. Thank, Thank you. you.